Now let's talk about how we can identify static one hazards and how we can solve them using the uh, K-map approach or the Carnot map approach. Uh, by identifying static hazards, I mean when you look at the circuit, you have to be able to tell that there is a possibility of a static one hazard appearing. Static one hazards always reduce to the simple form shown here meaning that for a static one hazard to occur, there have to be two paths that reconvene at an OR gate, and these two paths have to have differential delay, and they have to also present the OR gate with some form of true and inverted form of a certain variable. When that happens, you will see a static, uh, you will possibly see a static one hazard depending on the delays of the, of the circuits and um, the inertial model of delay that you are using. When we talk about this basic form being present in a circuit, we don't talk. We don't mean that this explicitly exists in the circuit. It could be implicitly present. For example, this circuit contains a static one hazard, basically because the variable a has two paths to this OR gate. You can see that it is taking this path and it's also going to take a path through the upper branch. So there are two paths for the variable A. It's not enough for two paths for a single variable to reconvene at an OR gate for a static hazard to occur. There also has to be an inversion between these two variables. So here we see that A is going to arrive and is going to possibly arrive at an inverted form at uh, the OR gate through the upper branch and in its true form through the lower branch. So this is another condition that you see a true and inverted version of the, uh, of the variable. The third condition is that the two branches have differential delay so that you can have a time through which the glitch appears. And this is obvious in this circuit because the upper branch is obviously much longer than the lower branch. Now, these inputs to the circuit are other logic inputs. The, va the values that we have here are the values that will cause this glitch to appear. So the glitch does not appear in all conditions or under all circumstances. It only occurs for certain conditions. So it occurs when the other variables have certain values and the value under suspicion, which is A in this case, makes a transition. From the circuit, we can see that the values of these variables that allow A to propagate through both branches are the values shown in the drawing. So for this NAND gate, if this variable had, been, had had a value of zero, then it would mask the variable A from the output of the NAND gate, and we could not possibly see a glitch. So for the value of A to propagate when A makes a transition, and it's important to recall that even though we are talking about a static hazard, it only happens when there is a transition in a certain variable. But for that transition to propagate through the first NAND gate, this variable has to be one. And for this A bar to propagate through this NOR gate, this input has to be zero. And so basically for any OR gate or NOR gate, the values of the variables other than the variable under consideration have to be zeros. And for NAND gates and AND gates, the values have to be ones to allow it to propagate out. Now, let's look at uh, one way in which we can solve this uh, logical hazard, this static hazard. So we know that the static hazard occurs because we see a true and a complement form of the variable A at the input of the OR gate, the final OR gate. And it's not enough to have these um, true and complement forms of A. They also have to have differential delays. So we saw that uh, because the upper branch has a longer delay than the lower branch, eventually A bar and A are going to have a transition that looks like this, which allows for a period of time in the middle where neither of A or A bar are one, and thus we see a glitch with a value of zero. On the other hand, if we uh, compensate the differential delay by adding a delay to the lower path, so that the delay of the lower path is now equal to the delay of the upper path, 
then A bar and A are going to match exactly. And if that happens, then there's no space for the glitch to occur. Now, it's important to notice that this delay has to be combinational delay. This is not a delay introduced by a shift register. This is not a delay by a number of cycles. This is a delay by an absolute time that is measured in terms of nanoseconds. It's extremely difficult to match delays, to match combinational delays. So it would be extremely difficult to try to match the delays of the upper and the lower path exactly. So this approach, while uh, it makes sense, theoretical sense at, at least, is not very practical. Uh, the correct approach to solving static one hazards is to add um, uh, extra uh, combinational logic which masks the uh, offending transition. To understand what this means, uh, we have to perhaps draw the corner map of the circuit. Uh, although this is not necessary and we will see ways in which we can introduce this additional circuit, uh, these additional circuits using just uh, logic uh, algebra, um, the kernel map actually allows us to visualize what's happening very clearly. So we go back to this original circuit, which is a three variable circuit. And the uh, logic output is a, a B bar plus B C. Because it's three variable, its kernel map is going to have eight squares. And each square represents one of the min terms. Um, this uh, function has active min terms at min terms uh, 3, 4, 5, and 7. So these are uh, marked in uh, by 1s on the corner map. Obviously, the implementation that we have uh, includes these two uh, rectangles. Uh, because we are in a three-variable corner map and we have uh, two square rectangles, each of these two square rectangles is going to is going to represent a two-variable uh, uh, two variable, uh, term in the sum of products. So this first term is obviously BC, and this second term is obviously a B bar, which you can see is the original expression. The original expression is a sum of products, not a sum of mean terms, but a sum of two products, AB bar plus BC. So this is just the representation of this original circuit. Uh, we have two, um, two rectangles, each of them uh, representing one of the uh, AND gates that we see in the original circuit. Now let's look at when the static one hazard actually happens in the circuit, um, in, in the circuit that we have here. So it happens if the value of A is equal to 1, and the value of C is also equal to 1. We already discussed that to allow the variable under suspicion, which is B in this case, to propagate uh, towards the uh, final gate, we have to have uh, inputs of A for any AND gates. So A is equal to 1 and C is equal to 1. Now, if B makes a transition, then we will have a static 1 hazard. Now, for A equals to 1, we are talking about the lower four squares of the corner map. For c equals to 1, we're talking about the, the middle four squares of the Carnot map. And so we're talking basically about these two squares. These are the areas where a and c are both equal to 1. And so if b makes a transition between these two squares, we will have a glitch. So if b makes a transition from this min term to this min term, we will have a glitch. So basically, we can see that from min terms 5 and 7, we have a glitch. And if you look at min terms 5 and 7, you will find that the only variable that makes a transition between these two min terms is variable b, which makes sense. We suspect that b is, uh, is the, the variable that will trigger the static one hazard. So we can actually identify where the um, static one has is going to occur just by looking at the Carnot map. And again, if you look at the Carnot map, a static one hazard is going to happen if you have two squares that are marked with one, meaning that they are active min terms, but that are not covered by a group. So you see that seven and five are adjacent and they are not covered by a group. So that's why when you make a transition between these two, you're going to have a static one hazard. 
3 and 7, min terms 3 and 7, are adjacent 1 min terms. However, a transition between them is not going to cause a static hazard because they are covered by a group. Same applies for min terms 4 and 5. So now this is really suggestive of how we're going to solve the uh, static 1 hazard. Uh, you might have guessed that uh, if the problem is that min terms 5 and 7 are not covered by a group, then the solution is to cover them by a group. So yeah, we can add another group that covers uh, min terms 5 and 7, and because they are covering, the, this is a redundant covering, it doesn't change the uh, logic function of the combinational circuit to begin with, and yet it will solve the static one hazard. So this additional term that we added here is, uh, in fact, uh, the term AC. And as you can see, just by looking at the original logic function, F equals uh, AB bar plus BC, adding the term AC to the logic function doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything about its functionality. It is additional hardware, true, but it doesn't change anything about the functionality. So it's a redundant term and it's redundant uh, circuitry. Uh, it will basically be an AND gate that is added here, AC, and it will become one of the inputs of the OR gate. Now, this will take care of the static one hazard and it will completely mask it. Now, let's talk about why it will take care of the static one hazard and how it will mask it. Now, if you look at the original problem, the original problem is when we make a transition between min terms 5 and 7, the function is supposed to keep an output value of 1. So f is supposed to be 1 in min term 5 and also 1 in min term 7, and it will be. The problem is in min term 5, we are relying on the term ab bar to maintain a value of 1. In min term 7, we are relying on the, on the term BC to maintain a value of 1. Now, C and A are not the variables that are going to give us the 1 at the nodes D and E. B and B bar are the values that will give us the values of 1 at D and E. But because there is a differential delay between B and B bar, then there will be a period of time where neither B nor B bar are ones, and therefore you will see the glitch. You can't, again, you cannot rely on C or A to maintain a one because we are dealing with AND gates. And so B and B bar have to also produce, either of them has to produce a one when there's a period of time when they both are zero just because of differential delay. By adding the term AC, we now have a term when, where when both A and C are equal to 1, this term is also equal to 1. And so this term is going to force the value of F to be 1, regardless of the values of B and B bar. But does this not change the logic function? No, it doesn't, because it is a redundant term. So A and C are going to be equal to 1 simultaneously only for min terms 5 and 7, which is already, which are already two min terms in which the logic function is supposed to be 1. So we are relying on A and C being 1 to maintain a, a value of 1 here, regardless of the transition that B and B bar make. So how can we uh, be sure that A and C are equal to 1? Well, if you go back here, B and B bar are not going to be able to propagate to D and E unless C and A are equal to 1. So if either of C or A is not equal to 1, we're not risking any kind of glitching anyway because we are talking about other mean terms in the Cardinal map. So these are the only cases where the glitch is significant or a risk, and therefore it's the only case where we have to take care of.